10 questions for every atheist. Some questions atheists cannot truly and honestly really answer, which leads to some interesting conclusions. An interesting conclusion is that every time you say that, that some question cannot be honestly answered. Uh, it means you are not really interested in listening to the answers, you are only trying to use the questions to make a point, and in this case you are not actually meaning those questions to the atheists, but for the fellow Christians, don't you? One. How did you become an atheist? At some point I realized that the Christian humanistic values I still praised from my Catholic upbringing were not actually Christian values, so I felt that nothing aside culture tied me up to the fiction of being Christian after several years of being a non-theistic agnostic and last Catholic. 2. What happens when we die? I don't know, but most probably we are no more. I think our cells or consciousness are tied to brain activity, so once the brain is no longer able to have activity, we are no more. 3. What if you're wrong, and there is a heaven, and there is a hell? Then it would be nice to know how to get into the first and avoid the second. Probably my Catholic education, which praised this over faith, leads me to conclude that faith only requirements are unlikely. So if I keep believing as a good person, I can reach the nirvana sooner, even if I don't believe in it. 4. Without God, where do you get your morality from? Upbringing, experience, innate and nurtured empathy, education and deduction. Pretty much the same as you. 5. If there is no God, can we do what we want? Are we free to murder and rape? While good deeds are unrewarded? There is a God and she doesn't tie you up, you can do as you want. Isn't free will an important part of Christian theology? Of course, any action might have consequences, particularly worldly consequences, such as increasing or decreasing the level of happiness of fellow people, goodwill, and jail time. As for cosmic reward or punishments, such as poetic justice, karma, or final judgment, while well, they probably don't exist. By the way, you notice that in evangelical Christianity, we focus on salvation by faith or by grace, regardless of this, murder and rape could be go unpunished, while good deeds are unrewarded? 6. If there is no God, how does your life have any meaning? My life means to me, and it means to my close ones and the people I have shared. 7. Where did the universe come from? I don't know. Space-time as we know it apparently comes from an event usually referred as the Big Bang. But where the Big Bang comes from is a question that might not even have sense. 8. What about miracles? What all the people who claim to have a connection with Jesus? What about those who claim to have seen saints or angels? What about all people who claim to have a connection with the Nirvana? Or cosmical connection with the entire universe? Or claim to have seen aliens, ghosts and leprechauns? Or should we support the testimonies that support our beliefs rather than testimonies from different beliefs? 9. What's your view of Dawkins, Hitchens and Harris? I like the way they deliver arguments, particularly Hitchens and Harris. Dawkins seems a little too confrontational to my taste. None of them speak for me, nor I praise their word as my ultimate guide. 10. If there is no God, then why does every society have a religion? If there is an almighty personal God, then why does every society have a different religion? Many religions are tied to the formation of ethnic identities and societies. Many smaller tribes and societies have just different levels of spirituality and conceptions of a magical world that are far from the way organized religions work in larger societies. And when you come to empire building and national states, secularism arises as a way for the rulers to get the exploration of people. So I think the premise of your question is wrong. Now, if you ask why people have different levels of spirituality and magical world conceptions, well, our brains are pattern circuits and it makes connection for every new information, regardless of the connections being real or not. And then we teach those connections to our kids. And if you are in power, you impose those connections to your people and their children, particularly if they allow you to keep your power.